So welcome to the uh, first in the YouTube lecture series for Philosophy 2020 Basic Logic. Uh, this is your instructor, uh, Nick. My email is right there if you ever want to reach me. Right over here. Um, I'm going to do these videos maybe uh, every week or every two, three weeks. Uh, they're meant to just kind of condense what we do in lecture. Uh, it's meant not to replace what we do in class, but just kind of act as a, a supplement uh, to help you with your review or in case you missed class. Um, so let's begin. Today we're going to talk about a series of foundational concepts, uh, which are really central to what we're going to be doing all year. These three notions are as follows. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about what logic is. And our definition is going to be something like, well, logic is a study of argument. Um, and an argument is something which aims to establish a conclusion. Uh, and arguments, the ones we're going to be interested in, are going to be valid. Uh, so let's look, let's look at all these three things in turn here. First of all, what's logic? Um, in philosophy, anyway, logic is going to be defined uh, for us as the systematic study of the forms of truth-preserving inference. In other words, we're asking, what else is true, given some information? Now, for example, if I say that all vigilantes are criminals, and the Batman is a vigilante, I can deduce the conclusion, right? If the premises are true, if what I'm saying is right, then it follows that the Batman's a criminal. Now, what's logical about that? What's distinctively uh, logical is when we notice this kind of curious fact. When we abstract away from the particulars of the argument, and we notice it has the following structure. Everything that is X is also Y. Now, this particular thing here is an X. This Z is an X. Therefore, if all Xs are Ys, Z, which is an X, must be also a Y. And it really doesn't matter what we plug in here. The structure is what matters. The form, not the content. So when we say that logic, is in our, as in our definition above, is the systematic study of truth-preserving forms of inference, what we're trying to do is find every single instance of this kind of thing. You know, all the argument, the forms, where we can plug in anything at all, and the argument would still be a good argument. And knowing which ones are the good forms... Let's us know when an argument is bad, too. So here's a bad argument. All undergraduates are students. My year old nephew's a student. So both these things are true. It's definitely true all undergraduates are students. It's also true I have an eight-year-old nephew who is a student. Therefore, my eight-year-old nephew is an undergraduate. Well, no, that doesn't follow, right? The problem here is that even if the first two statements are true, the, the premises, the conclusion does not logically follow from the information we're given in these premises. So it's a bad argument type. And that's true no matter the topic. It doesn't matter what you plug in instead of undergraduates and students and nephews. The conclusion just doesn't follow. It doesn't have the right kind of connection to the premises. So the kind of logic we're concerned with seeks to catalog the forms of inference that guarantee the truth of the conclusion. If, if the premises are true. And we call this deductive. It's a deductive logic. It's in contrast to inductive logic, which we're not going to be looking at. Uh, and this is kind of probabilistic. It often takes the form of uh, a generalization from observation, right? Uh, things always seem to fall, therefore gravity is universal. Well, we haven't observed everything in the universe, but based on this kind of the fact that we've seen so many, we kind of generalize to all the cases. Now, we're concern with uh, deductive logic in the context of arguments. So what's an argument? Well, it's a set of at least two propositions with the aim of establishing the truth of one, the conclusion, based on the truth of the others, the premises. What's a proposition? Well, that's actually uh, a good question. Uh, a proposition is a sentence of English representing a state of affairs that can either and only be true or false. It's a, it's a factual claim, basically, such as uh, snow is white. And not all sentences are propositions, only the ones that are capable of being either true or false. A command, an imperative, such as, shut the door, can't be true or false. So not all sentences are propositions. We're going to be interested in propositions. So what we're going to do to make an argument is going to take our propositions and we're going to arrange them like this. Um, we're going to start with the premises and we're going to list them. We're going to put a little line to separate them out. And at the bottom, we're going to put what it is... Uh, that we're arguing for. In other words, the conclusion. Um, this is called standard form, and we're going to be taking uh, arguments kind of in natural language in English, where sometimes the conclusion's uh, first, and then we 
give our reasons why and so on, and we're going to try and standardize them and put them in this form. So we do this because our concern is to discover which forms of arguments work and which just don't. We're not concerned with what particular arguments say. We're, we're interested in the structure of truth-preserving argument in general. You know, the ones which, if the premises are true, guarantee the conclusion. Now, consider these two arguments here. Actually, they're the same one. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, there's a silly argument. If pigs can fly, I'm rich. Pigs can't fly. Well, therefore, I'm rich. See, on the right-hand side, the proposition pigs can fly and I'm right are reduced on the left-hand side to uppercase letters. These kind of are variables. So P stands for pigs can fly, R stands for rich. Um, and the thing about this argument is that it's valid. And we see that it's valid if we look on the left-hand side. See that if P, if it's true that P implies R, and P is the case, uh, R follows. Right? Because the truth of the premises guarantees the truth of the conclusion. All right, P, but P and R could be anything. The idea is that the structure of the argument is such that if the premises are true, the conclusion necessarily follows. Uh, and this is the kind of thing we're going to be doing, right? So on the right-hand side, you have this kind of English thing. And on the, on the left-hand side, we're going to be uh, reducing them to these kind of placeholders, sentence letters, P and R, which represent propositions, and if, then, and so on, representing the logical connection between these propositions. Uh, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. That's actually for the next video. Uh, now, as we just saw, some argument forms guarantee the truth of the conclusion. This is a, a property known as validity. An argument is valid if, and only if, it's not possible to have true premises and a false conclusion. Right? It's valid if it's not possible to have true premises and a false conclusion. It's going to be invalid otherwise. Right? In other words, that if the premises are true, the conclusion is guaranteed to follow. Right, if we start from true premises, we keep the true conclusions. That's the essence of the deductive property, or the, the property of validity. And it's really the single most important concept in this entire course. Right, it's a valid argument is one that guarantees the truth of the conclusion. I keep repeating myself; it's uh, so central. Um, so we guarantee the truth of the conclusion on the condition that we assume the premises for the sake of the argument are true. It doesn't actually matter whether the premises are actually true. All that matters is that if they were true, the conclusion would necessarily follow. Right? Uh, remember, too, that validity is not a property of individual propositions. Uh, propositions by themselves are either true or false, but they're never valid or invalid. Only arguments, collections of propositions, can be valid or invalid. Now, Validity is not to be confused with soundness. An argument is sound if, and only if, it's both valid and its premises are in fact true. So if, if you remember my earlier if pigs can fly example, um, it's an argument that's valid in virtue of its form. Right? If the premises were true, the conclusion would follow. If it was true that flying pigs would make me rich, and if I had flying pigs, well, then it follows that I'm rich. None of these things, unfortunately, in the real world aren't true. These things, it just isn't the case. But the form is valid. So it's a valid argument that is unsound. Validity is but the form or the structure of arguments. Sound is but the meaning or the content of arguments. It's important to keep these two separate. So, validity is a property of arguments. Arguments are a collection of propositions, and propositions can either be true or false. We're going to call this their truth value. For instance, snow is white has a truth value of true. The earth is flat has a truth value of false. Now, the truth value of the vast majority of propositions has to be checked against the real world. Batman is Bruce Wayne. Happens to be true. But most people in Gotham don't know this, right? You'd have to find out somehow what the truth value of that proposition is. Now, a few propositions are interesting. They have truth values which you don't have to check. They're either always true or they're always false. For example, if I say, look, either Batman is Bruce Wayne or he ain't. Well, that's always true, and you're not going to surprise anyone with this insight. You're not going to go bursting into the newsroom telling people, I finally figured it out. Either Batman is Bruce Wayne or he isn't. Well, we already know that. It's a logically true proposition. You don't have to check either something is or it isn't. Now, on the other hand, we have logically false propositions, such as contradictions. Uh, you're not going to convince anyone that Batman is Bruce Wayne and that he also isn't at the same time. That's impossible. I don't need to check in the world. 
I don't need to check that, uh, I don't know, a triangle has three sides and it doesn't have three sides. That's crazy. So, why I bring this up is because um, logically true and false propositions create these special cases of validity. And it's it's interesting because it shows these kind of quirks uh, that happen when we formalize inference into like a rigorous system. Remember that the definition of a valid argument is such that uh, an ar a valid argument is one where it's not possible to have true premises and a false conclusion. So if an argument has a conclusion which is logically true, uh, that it's not possible to have true premises and a false conclusion, because the conclusion can't be false. So it's kind of valid by default. Any argument with a logically true conclusion is valid. Uh, if an argument is logically false, uh, has a logically false premise, or premises which contradict each other, it's likewise not possible to have true premises and a false conclusion, so the argument is also valid by default. Now just remember, validity is about structure. If it has this kind of formal property of not leading from true premises to false conclusion, it's just going to be valid. right? In the first case, if the conclusion is always true, you can't move from true premises to a false conclusion. In the second case, if the premises are always false, you can't move from true premises to a false conclusion. And what it says is not important. So long as it satisfies the condition outlined above, it's just going to be valid. And if you worry about this, it's probably because you're thinking about soundness, not validity. You're thinking about what the argument says, not what its structure is. So these are the special cases of validity that kind of reveal the kind of thinking we're going to have to do when we're dealing with this formal system. And that's all I have for lecture one. I'll see you guys, I guess, on Tuesday.